Okay, so now I'm going to try the Google Translation Hub, and for this I'm taking an article that I've, um, it's a draft that I have worked on, and um, first of all I'm actually going to check how, how, much terminology, how much terminology there is in the text, and because that is the major customizing task, so that's going to cause a lot of trouble in the empty output. Um, so a quick test is kind of I just take a paragraph, I have my DeepL um, desktop UI running, so I'm just going to kind of throw it in here, see what turns out. And uh, so let's look at the terms here. In the language localization, yeah, got it right. Digital content, blah, 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 education sector. Yeah, you see here the, the problem is not the terminology, it's the idiomatic German um, and the, the translation just isn't very nice. I would totally re rewrite the whole thing in English. Um, so the MT, this is, this is not a good use case for MT. However, we, we can test kind of the differences in the output between Google and uh, DeepL here. So this is my DeepL output. I can also translate the whole file. I'll do that later on. Um, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go into the Google Translation Hub. I've set up my own translation hub. Um, so here, this is kind of the backend configuration where I set up the whole user settings. I have um, my resources here, glossaries, which I will, will not need in this case. So that makes it a little easier. Um, and this is where I've created my portal. This The portal is where the users can, like if I have a client, they can go and upload their, their files here and they will be basically using my glossary and term base, uh, my, my translation memory and everything in, in the back end, which I have configured. So let's go here. That's, that's how the user interface looks. And I'm just going to select the file and upload it here. Here I'm uploading the file. I'm picking the target language. And you see there's no customization happening here, right? So this is like basically just raw baseline empty output. I'm translating this into English. I could also translate it to a couple of other languages. And let's go. I must say as well that um, articles generally are very high touch. They're not good for MT because the language uh, journalistic writing tends to be a little more idiomatic uh, and MT doesn't handle that well. But um, we're just trying, we're trying to actually look at something else here. Okay, let me download this file and then I'm going to put it up next to the DeepL output that we got. Um, for this, I have to go to recent. I could also, uh, one feature that uh, I think DeepL doesn't have yet, if you look at the documentation, where was it? Post editing. It has this post editing feature, but that's an advanced feature, so you need to kind of pay more per page to do this. Um, and basically what it is, is a cat tool editor. So you can, you could basically take this file here and uh, edit it like in a cat tool, do your post editing in here. This is something that DeepL doesn't yet support and uh, Google will save your TM in the background and um, try to adapt to your language in that way. So that I think is a feature that's really um, DeepL might need to catch up on. As far as I know, they have only um, glossary customization, but they don't yet have custom MT. They don't let you customize the MT or do post editing in their tool, but who knows that might come. So let's download the file and then I'm going to do the same thing in DeepL. So here in DeepL, I can upload my file as well. I have um, this desktop version. I'm going to go and upload my um, Word file. Here's, a, I, I've chosen the file, now I have to pick the target language. As you see, the, the list of languages is not as comprehensive, but uh, who needs a long list? Uh, what matters is that the languages there are that they produce good output, right? And um, let's go. So now I have both of them. Now I'm going to open both side by side. You're going to see in English this is pretty much gibberish because as mentioned the the source text is too idiomatic for to produce any decent uh, MT output but anyways what I want to do here is kind of um, try the compare the output 
the market for university translations in Germany. So we're just going to look sentence by sentence. In the language industry, localization refers to the adaptation of digital content for export. See, sentences are pretty much the same. In the education sector, or in education, it's the other way around. Here, translations are used for the smooth import of students. So you see here, this is a nominalization from German, so it doesn't sound idiomatic. It's not a, it's something you would have to completely rewrite, but they give you pretty much the same sentence. Now, what I'm going to do now is kind of just copy-paste a paragraph from both documents into a diff checker tool, and then we can actually visualize how much difference there is in this uh, raw, empty output between the two. So what I've done here now is I put um, I put the Google MT on the left and or sorry I put the deep L on the left and Google on the right and I'm just going to diff check it and see what kind of differences there are just so we can kind of visualize it right the localization in the education sector here the translations are used for serve you see there are no major difference. What interesting here, foreign students, uh, and here they call it Bildungsausländer because this is a German term, so that's definitely something that requires a human touch. So there's some very slight differences. Nationals, number of nationals entering at the same time, the number of foreign students starting a course of study is failing. At the same time, for demographic reasons, the number of nationals entering higher education is declining. So here, there, the difference is really the sentence is really turned out different. But either of them would require post-editing in the end. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't really matter which one is better because they're they're both um, um, they both need editing. The inter the interruption of international supply, yeah. So you see, there there are some there are some differences here, but there's also a lot of similarities in in terms of the output, and both of them would require po uh, post editing anyways. Either way, I think um, Google does allow more customization, and um, it kind of has this split where you have like an admin that can set up the term um, the the term base and uh, the translation memory. And the user doesn't really ha have to deal with it, um, so the user can just upload their documents. Uh, so it's a pretty nice design, and I think you can also brand it. You can like add it, uh, add your own flavor, and make it look like it's your agency's own tool. So yeah, pretty good work. Let's see what turns out, uh, but it's not suitable for all. Um, Documents, what I've also noticed is that it, it works better for English to German because, um, and that's not due to the quality of the MT, but it's because um, German, when translated, so German translationese basically based on English doesn't sound as translated as the other way around. Um, has various, uh, this has various um, reasons. But if you translate very idiomatic German to English, the result is not going to be as good as translating, let's say, idiomatic or like, you know, a marketing jargon from English to German. It's simply because maybe there is more influence generally from English on the German language than the other way around. So anything that you machine translate from German into English will require more post-editing. That's my two cents, and uh, looking forward to future developments. Um, I think this is really exciting, especially when you're just translating files. I would like to see what happens when you have to work with um, real localization files for a CMS, for example, and how this, um, how API integrations work, um, continuous localization, and automated workflows for larger content.